Hello viewers and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about scan tools, more specifically code readers, and why they really are not good for the average person to use. Well, I'm basically a what I would consider an advanced DIY mechanic. Uh, I started learning a long time ago when I was a kid how to do some basic mechanical repairs and I started picking up some of the di diagnostics you know when the vehicle started throwing check engine lights I went out and bought a cheap little uh, Actron code reader and spent the first couple of years uh, pulling codes and doing lots of research and starting to learn that those things can actually get you into a lot of trouble they can cause you to spend money that you really shouldn't be spending, diagnosing problems that you don't even really have, and just completely misleading you. You need to understand with a code reader that you're, you're, you're basically looking for a starting point. And a code reader is going to provide a starting point. What you really need to do is get a code reader that can do uh, slightly more advanced diagnostics. You need to be able to look at, at live data and you need to be able to look at freeze frame data. Um, that's, that's where the important stuff is. This is the code reader that I started out with which is the Actron CP9125 and these are you know, your uh, average department store uh, go in and buy it cheap dongles and um, little unit that interfaces with your telephone or cell phone or smartphone or tablet um, some of these have some nice features but again if you don't know how to interpret the information that these things provide you're gonna end up chasing around parts and not necessarily fixing your problem. So what do you do when your check engine light comes on? You break out a code reader. And you plug it in, you push the read button, zero three five two. Scroll down. Pending. So the only code is 0352. And then we go on the internet and we look up 0352. And in this case, what we find out is 0352 is a diagnostic trouble code for the ignition coil B primary secondary circuit malfunction. Well, what does that mean? Well, the typical response is we go to the auto parts store and we find out that that has something to do with the number two coil is not functioning properly. And we buy a brand new coil for the car. We put the coil in and it may or may not solve our problem. If it solves the problem, okay, great. If it doesn't, then obviously there's something else wrong and we're going to go chasing our tail down a hole. So assuming we've already replaced the coil and we've come back to the car and we've got the code and we're going to clear it out, push and hold erase, push and hold erase again, and we're done. And the check engine light is out. 
Now, for all you guys out there that think that you can plug a code reader into your car and go out and get it inspected because you turned your check engine light off, you've got a rude awakening coming. Because you're going to bring the car into the inspection station, they're going to hook it up to their computer, and they're going to tell you your car is not ready. You're going to go back to your car, and you're going to take this silly little code reader that you just spent $30, $40, $50 on, and you're probably going to want to throw it in the trash. The reason is because now it can't tell you why the car's not ready. Well, here's a little bit of an explanation. Misfire detector, fuel system monitor, comprehensive component monitor, catalyst, heated catalyst, EVAP, secondary air, oxygen sensor, and EGR VVT system. Well, these red exclamation points mean that these systems are not yet complete. And this is why your car will now not pass inspection. These have to be run through what's called a drive cycle. Once the drive cycle is completed and the monitors are completed, over here on the side it will tell you that it is completed. You'll have this little check mark. Um, this is a free app that I'm using with this extension cord and this little Elm 327. Bluetooth adapter. The Bluetooth adapter, I got it on eBay for about $12. I paid more for the cord than I did for the adapter. And I'm using a program on my phone that's a free app that allows me to check my system monitors. Unfortunately, because it's a free app, I can't do much more. So the bottom line on the little orange code reader is that it is nothing more than a code reader and unfortunately does have the ability to clear your check engine light. And again, like I was saying, if you don't know what's going on and you clear that check engine light, you're going to cause yourself a whole bunch of problems if replacing your coil pack doesn't fix your problem. And here I'll show you a little reason why. This stuff is called freeze frame data. See if I can get the glare out of here for you. But this this is freeze frame data. This is stuff that a mechanic needs to be able to see. And it tells you what the engine speed was at the time the error occurred. Um, it gives it, it, your fuel trims, your engine temperature. There's a whole bunch of information in here. Now again, that's another free app. This right here is an app. Download it off the Google Play. The interface is with the Elm 327. And it's given me the P0352 uh, coil B primary secondary circuit. And when I click the little arrow underneath, it gives me more detailed information, freeze frame data that will help me diagnose what the problem is. This is still extremely limited. It's a reader. Code readers are going to get you in trouble because you don't have the ability to do interactive um, checks. You need to be able to get in there and check the voltage, check the continuity, uh, check for feedback signal. There's a variety of different things that you need to be able to look for and check. And just like with any other code reader, I can go and clear out that code just like that. And we have no codes. Now I realize this isn't really all that great an example of why a code reader can get you into trouble because you know, generally what will happen is you'll go to the auto parts store, uh, they'll even lend you a code reader and you'll hook it up to your car, you'll get your codes, you'll go back inside and they'll start selling you parts. You really don't know what's going on but you're gonna take their word for it and you're gonna purchase the parts they're gonna give you and because they're most of the time they're electronic parts 
they're not going to be returnable. So if you go spending a hundred or two hundred dollars on parts and they don't fix your problem, you're still going to need to bring this car to a mechanic. This mechanic is going to charge you a diagnostics fee and then he's going to charge you for whatever labor and parts are necessary to fix the actual problem. Now some of you guys might have noticed when I showed you the app with the freeze frame data on it, it was not the same one that I was using that showed the system monitors. Again, every one of these free apps has its limitations, but there are free apps out there that will get you a specific amount of information. And again, the little Elm 327 code reader. I used it on the cable so that I don't accidentally forget this and leave it in somebody's car. But this can get me at freeze frame data. It can get me at some live data. I can use that second app that I have for looking at fuel trims. And fuel trims are an extremely important thing when it comes to diagnosing, uh, especially a drivability problem in a car. Uh, without that information, you really have nothing to go by. Not to mention there's a whole bunch of different things in your vehicle that are going to have to be relearned. Uh, various sensors, throttle control, your idle control, all of these different things that have to be relearned when you reset your computer. Now on the other hand, if you're looking at a car that you're thinking about purchasing, one of these little tools, including these that you can buy at the uh, local... Uh, Wally World. You can plug one of these things into your car or into the car that you're thinking about buying and you can find out if there are any pending codes hiding or any little things that you should be aware of. Now as a DIY mechanic I have several different tools at my disposal. I've got my Actron 9125. I've got an Actron 9685 I believe forgot what model that was 90 yeah I think it's a 9685 and I got the 9449 this thing here is for basically domestic vehicles uh, it'll access some brake information and as you can tell by the condition of this thing I pretty much never use it I got my own 327 and I've got this launch C reader resetter uh, I've only used this once or twice. It's really not the greatest thing in the world either. I actually find the most use out of the apps that I get on my phone when my phone works right. But long story short, no one tool is really going to do all the work for you. And you really need to have a collection of all sorts of stuff. But uh, yeah. So the next time your check engine light comes on and you think that uh, all you got to do is clear your light out and go get your car inspected, you got a surprise coming. Take my advice. Don't do it. But if you want to diagnose problems in the car, starting off with one of these and a couple of free apps on your phone, and there's a whole bunch of them on the Google Play Store, would probably be your best place to start. Now, as cars evolve today and become more and more technologically complicated, um, I'd even be a little bit afraid to plug one of these things in because some of these newer vehicles need some really high level scan tools. I'm going to be adding to my collection of tools pretty soon. Um, Right now I have to stick with vehicles that are more than a couple of years old because they just don't have the capability as of yet to work on some of these newer vehicles that have electric parking brakes and whatnot because you need to be able to access these controls. You need to be able to turn these controls off. Um, I don't know what else to say at this point, so I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to close this up. I'm going to say thank you for watching. Uh, please go down below click subscribe ring the bell for notifications and i'll probably be catching you on another one with a new tool soon